On today's episode, I have 11 thrift store flips for you today that you are going to love. We are going to get so much done today. I'm also going to show you how I price these items that I'm going to be reselling and show you how to decorate with some of these items that I am going to be keeping. In my last videos, I asked you if you would rather see thrift flips for my store or thrift flips for decorating. And there was a vast majority of people who wanted to see the thrift flips for my store. So I'm going to show you how I price everything as well. Here we go. For my first thrift flip, I got this massive cutting board from the bins a while back. And I just had it in my garage waiting for inspiration. I didn't know if I wanted to fix it up or keep it the same. I know there are similar ones at Target that are definitely trending right now. And I believe Magnolia Home even has one similar. This one was 30 but the actual brand on there is called Crofton. And it is a Home Depot brand. It's made to go inside of really big sink. And they actually sell these ones for about $75, $76. So this one I have is that brand. So I'm guessing it was about that much to begin with. What a major score. I need to sand it because whoever owned it originally definitely put it to good use, which I think is great. But, you know, it has all those knife marks on it and it has dried out from being washed several times. The great thing about wooden cutting boards, though, is that as long as you don't put anything toxic on there to seal it, then you should be able to sand it and re-oil it up and you'll have a good as new cutting board. As a young girl, it feels were mine. We played hide and seek for hours. Raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free. Now that I've sanded it nice and smooth, I'm going to use some cutting board oil, which you can buy from any home improvement store. And I will also have it linked in my Amazon description box for you if you'd rather buy it online. But you just rub it on there. I like to do a cool little design. It makes it a little more fun to rub it in. But this is my favorite part of woodworking is taking raw wood and putting some kind of finishing oil or clear coat because it completely changes how it looks. I really can't believe how good this looks. It looks brand new. Another thing that I want to tell you about using the cutting board oil is that you want to apply it once and let it soak in for about a day. And then for the next day or two, just give it another coat and another coat until it stops absorbing the oil. Then it's ready to use. Here it is all finished. I like to stage things together when I'm doing small thrift flips and so I'm going to have this be one of the background pieces and since it's pretty much the largest background piece I thought that would be perfect to do it first. Look at how great it looks. You could even put it behind your stove for decoration or store it there or store it in your cabinet. This is how much I will be asking for it in my booth. I'm going to literally show you the screenshots of my online platform where I price everything for my store. My next thrift flip is also a cutting board, but I'm going in a completely different direction with this one. I saw a video with Jamie Ray Vintage, Jamie Ray and her husband, and they were talking about the cottage style that is so popular right now and how it's pretty much the same thing as farmhouse, but you just add a lot more green and flowers. And I thought that was so funny and so true, and I don't know how I didn't notice that, but it's very, very true. So. Since they inspired me with how they said that, I decided to do a cottage color and a farmhouse design on here. So I want to know what you think of that. Do you think cottage style is pretty much the same as farmhouse or do you think it's something completely different? I do think they're very, very similar. This dark green color is to die for. I think that it's going to look really good on uh, several things that I'm doing today and you're really going to like it. Way. 
Now that that's done and it's had time to dry, it is time to apply the stencil. I went through my stencil stash and I let my family vote on which of the stencils that I should use. And they picked this one and I think it's really adorable and everyone loves chickens and chickens always sell really well. So that's a really good thing to put in your booth. Even if you don't like doing chicken decor in your house, people love chicken decor. So add some chickens to your booth and see if it sells. And let me know because I'm pretty sure it will. I believe I got this stencil from Hobby Lobby. I've had it for a very long time and obviously have never used it until today. And I didn't even realize that it's actually one of those silk screen ones, which I was worried that was going to turn out weird since I'm not like squeegeeing it like a silk screen is supposed to be. I'm just going to use a little foam dabber brush that's meant for stencils. And to not waste as much, I'm just using an old Ziploc bag instead of a plate to dab my paint on. And if you're interested in a stencil like this, I can try and link the exact one. And I will also try and link some on Amazon in my description box as well. And I will probably put some other cool ones. I'm sure that there's some really neat ones on Amazon. So check out my Amazon store for more cool stencils like this. But now it's time to distress it. One thing that I wish I would have done before distressing it was seal it because the white acrylic kind of like cross contaminated the green, which doesn't look terrible, but it's not what I had wanted. And so in the future, I would say seal the acrylic paint, the craft paint first, because when I wiped it off, it kind of spread and it looks okay, but I still wish I would have sealed it first. But either way, this is going in my shop. And let me know what you think of this type of decor. Is this farmhouse? Is this cottage? Or is this both? And here is the price that I'm going to ask for it in my booth. If you are new here, I just opened a booth last year and I am sharing all of my experience and advice. So hit subscribe if that is something that you are interested in. The next project is this set from the bins. They didn't go together originally. It was missing that middle one and I found this one separately. It seems like it was probably from the dollar store, but I'm going to put it all together as one arrangement. You can see the foam through the burlap. Again, this is from the dollar store. I can tell by the tag. So I'm going to use a different fabric to cover up that burlap. And then this yarn or twine that I got right here is actually also from the bins. So I'm using tons of stuff from the bins for this project. And the fabric itself is from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to remove the old um, raffia string that it had on there and cut out a square of fabric that will go over top the burlap and I'm going to tie it on kind of the same way that it was before. With this project and with all of the projects that I'm doing today, you can do them in any color scheme that suits your style. So as you're watching, imagine these projects done in colors and schemes that you would love to decorate with so that you can be inspired to work with what you have going on in your house because maybe my dark green and lavender color scheme I'm doing today is not your thing or it doesn't match the style of your resale booth if that's what you do as well or your style for your home. So do it however you want to do it, but it just gives you an idea of how you can either fix up something you already have in your home or how you can hit the Goodwill bins and find literal trash in there or literally find trash <laughs> and turn it into beautiful treasure and decorate your home and make it feel cozy and cottagey, maybe French country. If you're like me, I love decorating in the French country style. Let me know in the comment section down below what you would call your decorating style or your style that you put in your resale booth. Just whatever style that you prefer over everything else. Let me know in the comment section down below. Now I'm using that twine to wrap around several times and tie into a knot. You could also use a decorative ribbon or something else like a lace or something like this on here. Whatever you have on hand or whatever you prefer would be fine on any piece that you do and it would look great. The main point is just to tie that fabric into a little cute cover for the arrangement, kind of like a little pot. Then I just slide it back into the original arrangement and it looks adorable. What do you think of this one? And also, what do you think of the vignette that I'm creating here? I'm trying to show you how I could possibly decorate it in a house or in my booth. Right now, the sales for my booth are kind of slow, so I don't have space in my booth to put these in at the moment. But I still think it's worth the time to show you how to arrange things together that you're creating. And a really good thing to do for your booth or for your home is to do crafts all in the same color scheme so your house will look cohesive. I am going to be opening up an online Etsy store soon, so if you see anything in this video that you're interested in buying, send me an email. 
I hope to have that up next week and the prices will be reflecting the cost to put it on Etsy plus shipping. So these are the prices for in my store, but the Etsy prices will be a little bit more. The next thing that I'm going to work on is this. You probably remember it from my thrift haul. It had somebody's name written on the bottom. So I used my orbital sander to sand it off. If you're wondering, yes, I did use my big thighs to hold this while I sanded it. I mean, if you got it, use it. <laughs> I had these little Easter eggs inside this pot that I got from the bins. And that's usually how I get things at the bins, just randomly and put them inside other containers so I can fit everything in my cart. But I thought it would make a really cute nest inside this. I'm guessing this was originally a mortar and pestle, but it is in a little bit of a dry condition. So I'm using that same cutting board oil since this is the same material as a cutting board. And I'm going to oil it up a little bit just so it doesn't look all scuffed up and dry. It's very easy and quick and it's a super satisfying thing to do. Once that's finished and I wiped off the excess oil, I'm going to put some moss in here. I don't have bird nest material um, and I just I, ha I don't think it's worth buying since I don't make it very often. So I'm going to use what I have because that's literally the theme of my channel at this point <laughs> is using what you have. And I'm going to use some moss. Plus, I think the green color of moss looks really, really pretty and it is eye catching. So while it's in my booth, I think this would be a great addition. In order to get it to look more like a nest, I need to build it up and also build up the edges. So that's what I'm going to do now. And since this is something I plan to sell in my booth, I want to make sure that these things are sticking down really well to where if you lean it on its side, nothing's going to fall out or anything like that. You want your items that you're reselling to be pretty sturdy. Plus, if you're keeping this for your home, you're going to put it away probably as the seasons change. And you want it to be able to stand up well to being in storage throughout the year when you're not using it and be able to pull it back out and have it look nice again. Now that that's finished, let's add it to this vignette that we're working on here. We're adding one thing at a time and slowly building up this beautiful themed vignette. Now think of how you can do this in your home or in your resale booth and make it in the color schemes that you like. If you're not into the color scheme that I'm doing, I would be selling this wooden nest arrangement for $6.95. I like to price low so that a lot of people can afford it and also because I'm a new business and I got to get my word out there. So that's part of my advertisement is my low prices. But the next thing that I'm working on is this. I got these pieces from the bins separately and I decided that together they would make a really unique arrangement. So I'm gonna paint the base in that same green color again because we're creating a vignette of all things in the same color. Not only does this look really good together, but it also makes it easy to use up what you have instead of having to buy a bunch of different colors for everything. You can just keep using the same color until you run out pretty much. And especially if you pick classic colors that like, like this deep green that are gonna always be in style that aren't necessarily for a certain season or not. Like this could go for Christmas or spring and deep greens are very on trend. I'm gonna blow some flour on here this is gluten-free flour, so it has a little bit of a rougher texture to it, which I think is kind of helpful for what I'm doing. I'm just going to try and create a little bit of texture on the base here. I've seen people use flour and, and things like that to create like a dusty finish, and I was trying to kind of experiment with that since I haven't done it yet, but that didn't work right with the type of flour that I have, and so I decided to just make it textured instead. And this is a lesson to anybody who's watching that just because it didn't work out he originally thought doesn't mean that it's bad. Like good old Bob Ross said, it's a happy accident. It turned out great. It looks really good, so don't worry. 
No need to stress if something doesn't turn out exactly how you wanted it to in the beginning. Maybe it's something that's going to turn out even better. Like this. I thought it actually looked better upside down, so I'm going to be gluing it on upside down. I went and got some cement glue from the dollar store because that's the closest store near me and the cheapest as well. <laughs> and we are on a tight budget right now. And I'm going to glue these two together. It's still a very strong bond. It works really well. They used to have E3000 or E6000, whatever the number it is, glue at the dollar store, but they don't anymore but here's how it looks put together I think it looks gorgeous it kind of makes this silver bowl look like a flower that is opening and then the stem it being the green piece on the bottom and I added lemons to it because I love lemons if you've watched my channel you know I love lemons <laughs> but if you're new I like lemon decor a lot I even did a whole theme of it in my dining hutch that you can watch but for this, it's just going to be a little bit of a spring touch going on here for this cottagey farmhouse, French country, whatever you want to call it look that we're going for today. price that I decided for this antique silver pedestal with green base is $6.95. I think that is a steal of a deal and I hope it sells quickly. Next I have these placemats that I got from the bins. They obviously need to be washed. Anything that you get from the bins is going to need to be seriously cleaned well because the bins can be a pretty gross place. I also picked up some stuffed animals and normally I don't do this but these all look to be in really good and clean condition but still they're going to need to be seriously cleaned. I got the frog for my one-year-old, almost two-year-old. I got this little kitty for my middle daughter. She really loves stuffed animals and sparkles and anything cute. And then I also got something for my son. So when Earthbreeze reached out to collaborate with me, I knew that I wanted to try them right away. I have seriously dirty things to clean, having four kids and two dogs. And Earthbreeze is doing something that other people are not. They are not using plastic. I am trying to slowly get rid of all the plastic in my house and this is a great way to start. All you have to do is take a piece, it's like a dryer sheet, out of this little tiny small packet of laundry detergent. And since I have a front loading washer, I'm going to put it into my soap container and I'm only going to need to use a half a sheet to wash this small load with my placemats and stuffed animals. Earthbreeze will only make laundry day easier for you, but they also are easier on the planet because they donated over 100 million loads of laundry and counting to those in need by donating to shelters and organizations that need help. If you're wondering how effective it is, it fights everyday stains and odors, it gives you an amazing clean every time, and if you're like my family and have sensitive skin, Earthrise is dermatologist tested, hypoallergenic, does not have bleach or dyes, which is a must for my family. This was my first time ever washing placemats made out of that type of material that those were, so I was a little bit worried and I washed it on a very delicate setting just to make sure that they didn't get ripped up and they were fine. I air dried them on top of my dryer and then I just threw my now clean stuffed animals into the dryer on a delicate setting as well, but I put it for the extra dry setting just because it's going to take a while to dry them. Look inside here and see how it is completely dissolved out of my soap dispenser. And I want to show you up close how this works. So all you have to do is tear it if you're doing a small load and then watch in real time how it dissolves. I was actually really amazed by this. So I wanted to share it with you guys how quickly it dissolves. So you're not going to have any of that left over in your clothes. So if you're interested in trying it out, go to earthbreeze.com slash desert DIY to get started with 40% off. That is earthbreeze.com slash desert DIY for 40% off your subscription. Now I want to show you how good these look afterwards. They still look brand new and now they're clean. Perfect gifts for Valentine's for my little ones. We are in the middle of trying to figure out exactly how we want to decorate this Eden kitchen. And so we've been changing out the table and getting new tables and selling tables but I think this is the last table we're going to settle with and it looks so cute with these placemats on there I only need five because my littlest is still in a high chair but look at how good these look they look brand new and I got them from the Goodwill bins for practically nothing 
Next, I'm going to work on this mug rack. I showed you this in my last haul video. I bought this from a store that was in my boutique store, another booth. And I also got these mugs from Goodwill. They were $1.99 each. I took their tags off and now they just have that sticky residue on there from where the sticker was. So I'm going to wash them really quick and then put them on my new mug rack. And I think this is going to look really good on my dining table. Some people may call this a mug rack or a cup drying rack or a bottle drying rack but I think that they're a very versatile piece of decor for your home because you can do so many different things on them and you can change out your mugs for all the seasons or occasions or put something different on there that's not cups or mugs. You can hang all sorts of stuff on there, ribbons or holiday decorations and change them out however you like or do it to however style you like as your styles change and evolve over the years. I love having classic things like these that you can reuse over and over again in different ways. Now I'm going to be doing something with these two pieces that I had in my last haul. One was just the broken base off of something and the other was a beautiful plate that I couldn't live without. So I'm going to be gluing them together and creating a little serving dish or a platter or whatever you want to call it. It's like kind of like a cake stand I guess. But I'm going to use it next to my kitchen sink for my soap and my sponges or a place to set my rings down. Whatever I may use <laughs> next to my sink. I think this is going to look really good with my French country style that I'm doing and I want to say French country is kind of a very broad term and for me this is French country so if it's not French country to you that's okay too. The adhesive I'm using here is that same one that I used before in the video it's just a cement glue and it works really well. Look at how beautiful that all turned out together it looks like it's originally made that way. It looks really good next to my sink. I try and add pops of white all in my kitchen because it is really dark in there. We have a two-story house and are surrounded by trees, so we have really no good light in this room. I would love to put in a ceiling light or what is it called, a skylight one day to get more light into my kitchen because it is a dark cave sometimes. And I actually will be showing you how I'm renovating my kitchen a little bit. I just painted the cabinets and updating some small things here and there. But I think that's a really good budget makeover that some of you may appreciate or may want to do in your own home. The next project is a frame that I got from the Goodwill bins in my last mega haul. And I'm telling you, if you have not seen that haul video, you need to check it out because you are not going to believe how much good stuff that I got from the bins that day. And then I also talked about how I have this massive book of botanicals and it was $29.99. I'm going to try and find it online for you guys. I had bought it in person in a store, but I'm going to try and find it online or something similar. If you love botanical prints and flowers in general, buy a book like this and you can decorate a million picture frames with tons of beautiful florals for really cheap. Like you could probably do... 500 frames with this book and frames are always everywhere at the goodwill bins at least for my goodwill bins so you can do this for dirt cheap you could be getting really gorgeous art for your home or for your booth for really really cheap this way so i'll try and find a book like this on amazon it may not be this exact book but i will try my best to find it and if not i will try and find something very similar but all I had to do was cut out these images to fit um, in the little area where those clips are. I wanted to make sure they were proportionate. I also wanted to make sure that they were all the same size. So I'm using that first one and centering it on all the rest of them and then tracing it around there and cutting it out with my scissors. Here it is all finished with beautiful lighting hung up in my bathroom where we do have window and natural light. 
I think that irises are one of my favorite flowers. There's so many of the irises that are beautiful and these illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to be selling this for $12.95. The next project I'm working on is this little wheelbarrow. I got a grouping of them. I think I have like four of them that all look like this. They were handmade by somebody who is awesome. I don't know who, but they are awesome at making stuff by hand. You can tell that it's not something from a craft store. It's something that like somebody's husband made for them. And I think that's amazing. But I'm going to be repainting this one and I'll repaint all of them eventually. But just for today, I'm only repainting this one. And I'm going in the same color scheme of everything else I've been doing. I'm using the white and I'm using that dark, beautiful green color. And I'm also going to be doing a stencil on this one as well. But I tried selling this in my booth without any paint on it. So I tried selling it just how it was to begin with for $9.95 and it never sold. Also, it was not... Um, springtime when I tried selling it it was fall and Christmas which I thought fall would be great like you could put pumpkins in this and decorate and all that stuff but nobody saw the vision I guess so now it's time to go back to the drawing board with this and create something a little bit different and invest some of my time and some of my paint <laughs> into this and hopefully this will sell now I will keep you updated on whether or not this sells with how I've updated it Flying low under the radar Like a nighthawk stealth plane you are Hiding out in the shadows Keeping from the light of day Nobody shoots Now that all the paint is dry, it is time to do the stenciling. For this stencil, I'm doing a different stencil than before, but I'm going with that same like country cottage or farmhouse look or French country look that I've been doing this whole time. And I'm going to be doing a stencil that says Farmer's Market, Country Fresh Vegetables, Hand Selected and Hand Packed Since 1921. I don't know who comes up with these, but it's so cute and I love it. I'm using the same sponge before. I'm not even going to wash it. I added that green to the white on my little Ziploc bag there. And I didn't want it to look too perfect. And I thought that adding a little bit of white would help that, uh, make it look cool as well. So I wasn't worried about all that. No fuss about any of this. The only thing you need to worry about when doing stencils is not using too much paint on your sponge like this. You want to make sure you dab just a tiny bit on there and dab in an up and down pattern, not a side to side pattern. And this will prevent you from having bleeding.
Some people have written books, some have a great look that covers the magazines for kids who are 17. But I don't know what to do. Staring into the blue sky and just waiting for a sign. Some, they are certain of what awaits them. I let that dry for a little bit under a fan and now it's time to make this look even older and I'm just using a 150 grit sandpaper and sanding back the letters that I painted on here and I think it looks really great. I'm also going to distress the rest of this little wheelbarrow so that it all flows well together with the same type of finish. Here it is staged in a way that I would stage it in my booth if I had a space like this in there that was available. <laughs> Since I don't have a whole lot of space available in there, I'm staging it at home for you, which gives you an idea of how you could stage it to decorate your own home. I think this would actually make a really good front porch decoration. And I'm going to be now listing this for $12.95 in my shop since I put some effort into it. The last project I have today is this basket. When I did my mega haul, I asked you guys what color you would paint the basket or what color you think reminds you the most of Easter. And somebody said lavender purple and I just imagined this basket in the lavender purple and I thought that is going to be gorgeous. It wouldn't look as kitschy or cheesy as some of the other pastels maybe or like kind of childlike. I think lavender is something that can be very mature as well as childlike and plus my entire thing I'm doing today all of this vignette I'm creating in the same color scheme is going to have that light purple that dark green and white and so oh and wood of course <laughs> but i'm mixing my own lavender i didn't have a lavender paint you don't have to have the exact right paint color you can always create it with what you have try mixing paints and just see what colors you can come up with because i bet you can make beautiful colors that you never would have thought about by mixing the paints that you already have here's how it looks in front of a white background just because i know the camera might be making it look pretty white because of the bright light that I have but I'm just going to lightly paint it on here kind of like a dry brush effect but a little bit more opaque than a dry brush look I definitely don't want it to be perfect I want it to look a little bit rustic because I think that would help with my French country look my cottage look that I'm going for Now that the paint is dry, it's time to add in some florals. I had these hydrangeas that I got from the bins and I had washed in the tub with a little bit of bleach water because they were pretty dirty. I had left them outside and they got rained on, long story, but I have that in some past videos if you're looking to find out how to wash florals in your bathtubs, but they turned out beautiful and they look perfect in this basket. In the pictures, the basket looks kind of small, but it's actually a very large Easter basket. And I think this is gonna be a really pretty statement in my booth. 
It also looks really good staged with other things. And when it comes to Easter baskets, it's all about how you stage it. It can look weird on its own or it can look phenomenal staged correctly with something else like this frame here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday and I will see you next time. Bye!